<laughs> well, hello, folks. Hope you are all doing well and doing what you like and enjoy um, with good friends and family. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone in the United States. I hope you all have a great meal with your friends and family. Um, we live in a world of machine fetishism, just like we have since the 19th century. I'm reading that book, Fossil Capital, and it's really interesting. And um, he talks about how the steam engine was imbued by people with godlike energy or godlike energy, godlike attributes. It could do so many things with steam power, steam, the steam engine that is, and with coal power. So coal was the power, that was the thing driving it. And the engine was the, the automaton, the, the machine that could make all kinds of things happen. Whether you were building machines or, or making cloth, textiles. It's fascinating. And all the labor problems and social problems that we've seen throughout the 20th and 21st century would be completely recognizable to anyone from uh, 1830. <laughs> Nothing much has changed. Um, it's just that our machines have gotten more complex and can do more stuff. So even in that book, he talks about how much labor a ton of coal and a steam engine could replace, you know, millions of men. And Nate Hagens talks about that in terms of oil and gas. But, you know, it is true. So the capitalists, the people who control the equipment and the capital, uh, you know, their fight was always with labor because unruly people, you know, they're always asking for more. Never, you could never give them enough. And they were always causing trouble. So back in the day, they had a law back in the 19th century in England. If you were caught uh, destroying a machine, the property of, of you know, your employer, uh, you had the death penalty. And if you were defending your employer, the employer from a mob, a striking mob, and you happened to kill somebody, uh, that was completely pardonable. <laughs> so I don't know. And, and now we, we have this thing with terrorism and state terrorism. So on one level, uh, obviously, it's permissible. And, you know, state terrorism. And uh, private terrorism uh, is not. So, uh, you know, when we were wiping out uh, Native Americans... And the settlers, the Europeans, the white folk, um, the you know, whenever the Indians fought back, they were savages. And when we were murdering them in droves through various means by destroying their crops, killing their buffalo, what they hunted, hurting them off cliffs, whatever we did. Uh, that was just something we had to do for our manifest destiny. So all these contradictions, all of these best practices of imperialism, empire, and colonialism are still being practiced today. And if you read around the subject of current events or history, you'll run into this over and over and over again, and it never changes. So I woke up this morning and I saw... Morning Joe. I never watched that. I haven't watched that in over, or I, well, I haven't watched it since like 2015. So, or 2016. Well, remember the uh, Trump syndrome and the whole Russia Gate scandal and all that. So I was glued to that back then. I'm embarrassed to say. 
But I, I did watch that show back then. It was annoying back then, but I watched it anyway because I, I always thought Trump was just a clownish uh, con man, and I thought it was ridiculous that you know he was going to be uh, the uh, Republican nominee. But anyway, whatever. Not my guy. Um, but I, I saw it this morning, and they were talking about the same stuff that they were talking about in 2016 and they don't look any different. I don't know if it's like digital youthing or whatever, but maybe, maybe Joe's hair is a little bit grayer, but they look exactly the same. So they, they age well. So 2016, 2023, yeah, they haven't changed. And it's the same clique of people there saying the same thing. So I was like, holy cow, I just woke up in 2016. Uh, it's 2016 again, and nothing's changed, you know? It, it, was, it was just a funny moment I had with myself. Uh, it's deja vu all over again. I can't, you know, I can't watch CNN or anything anymore because it reminds me of times when I was a lot more ignorant, less, less aware of things. I always read a lot, but, you know, I was still tied into the, to the media and still thinking that uh, America was going somewhere, it had a decent purpose and so on, and I felt like we still had a chance despite all of my disappointments with uh, dot-com bubbles in 2008 and uh, wars in, in Iraq and Afghanistan and all that kind of thing. Um, when oppressed people uh, fight back and do something, you know, they're automatically branded as lunatic, uh, insane terrorists. But they're not. They're, they're rational people. They're not insane. They think things through. They have an, an agenda, a purpose, a strategy, tactics. They, they're responding and reacting to things that are happening to them. They just don't get their the idea that they want to die in some battle with a superior force just because it's something that would be kind of fun and interesting to do. Um, they feel pushed uh, against the wall and, and they're, they don't feel like they have any choice. <clears throat> so, yeah, you don't have to make excuses for people who uh, fight back. You just have to understand why they're fighting back. And then maybe you can think about what you might do to uh, short circuit that causal uh, engine leading to the violence, the private terror violence and the state terror violence. <clears throat> so I posted on Facebook you know, uh, Chris Hedges, he's talking about Israel's war on hospitals. It's good. I think you must read it. If you don't want to know anything about the history of that region, that's fine. Um, you know, reactionaries are just saying all that all Palestinians have to do is just leave the occupied territories and there'll be peace over there. But, you know, I don't know if you would would just uh, accept that if you were in their shoes. Um, if you would just, if somebody comes into Denver and says everybody in Denver of a certain type of person has to just leave, get out, and everything will be fine. I wonder if you would if just do that. Anyway, it's a good article. There's too much to talk about it. I think you should read it. You know, you don't want to know about the Nakba. You don't want to know about any of this stuff. But it's interesting, and you should know about it. And there's lots of good um, hyperlinks in there with great references to things. Um, I also read another piece by Indy, who um, is a Sri Lankan who grew up in Canada and the United States, but he's in Sri Lanka again. And he made the point that uh, Ukraine has been abandoned. Nobody's talking about Ukraine anymore. <laughs> and uh, 
it is kind of looking like that, isn't it? You have to decide that you're going to put your whole industrial capacity behind a war when you're fighting a country like Russia because they're capable of being in a war economy. And, you know, we don't have to look at what happened to the Wehrmacht or the SS or all the Tiger tanks and Panzer tanks just near Kiev back in the day in World War II. Um, you know, they just, Russia built more, or the Soviets built more tanks. And they ground down the the Nazis and they lost. So 80% of German war capacity and armies and so on were, were more or less destroyed by the Soviets before uh, D-Day, before the U.S. got involved. And then if you look at all these generals and so on, they're all egomaniacs, whether it's Patton or, uh, Patton or other people, Montgomery. And they all made terrible mistakes just because they wanted to prove something personally uh, and get glory. You know, I want to ride into Rome before the Brits, so I'm not going to destroy the retreating German army and so on. There, none of them, uh, um, you know, Churchill made no, nothing but mistakes throughout his career, but we, he's a hero, right? And anybody who fights back against a superior force is a savage. That's just the way it is. And the winners write the history. So, you know, he talks about um, a lot of things in this article. <laughs> I, I just would quote too much of it. But um, I recommend you read that one. It's called Remember Ukraine. Ukraine is being abandoned. And he publishes on Medium and elsewhere. And another good one he did was a reaction to um, the Bin Laden letter. So this has been a thing. I shouldn't even say the guy's name. What do you say? O-B-L or whatever, or O-B, O-B-1-L, Kenobi, because you don't want to get, you know, censored. But the kids on TikTok read it, and they cherry-pick some things out of it. It's hard to think critical, critically about it, but unless you understand the background and have a certain understanding of a certain kind of anti-Semitism and a certain, cer certain ways of, of uh, interpreting and expressing and, and uh, is Islam... Um, I'd say most Muslims are peaceful, decent, good people, but, you know, there are fanatic Christians, fanatic Muslims, fanatic Hindus, whatever, who are extremist and dangerous. But they cherry-pick some stuff out of his letter, and they say that pretty much makes sense, and it's interesting it's written in 2002 and nothing's changed. Um, so that's a really interesting piece the other thing is you can find still in archives the original letter. And please don't read links that are up on, online that profess to be the letter because they're all updated. There's been stuff inserted into it like about Obama and so on. 2002, Obama wasn't a thing. So there's lots of misinformation there. And it go, it's like, you know, the Gospels, you know, they're just rewritten. It's like a game of telephone. So the kids are just passing one thing uh, to another kid, and then it's embellished. And by the time, you know, a, a month rolls by or a week nowadays, it's not even anything resembling the original document. So always try to find original documents when you can. Just do a little bit of work. It might take you five minutes or 15 minutes, but you can, you can find usually in archives the original stuff. And then read it for yourself. Think about it for yourself. Uh, what do you disagree with here? What do you agree with here? 
and then look at other people's commentaries and you'll have a good understanding of what's 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 going on what's um inspiring the kids to make the tiktok stuff so another thing i wanted to say about the middle east thing is in my opinion i i read another piece crazy piece oh my god uh a, from somebody who's just a climate change denier or a global warming denier who's blaming everything on the government. So there are these types of people who think that government always and everywhere is evil. I don't know what you're going to have if you don't have any government or governance. <clears throat> if you, <laughs> I, you know, uh, I, they never say what they want. Like, let's go back to feudalism or let's go back to, you know, King Henry VIII or whatever. Uh, this structure, they don't really know anything about government. They just know it's bad and evil. And that the elites, you know, Bill Gates and Schwab and so on, uh, want to take your stuff away and make you miserable and tell you what to do. And, <clears throat> and it's that kind of a conspiracy. So it's a hoax. All of it's a hoax. And these kind of people are just so terribly ignorant. I, I don't know if they know they're ignorant, but their websites are always like critical thinking website or the American thinker. And they're always talking about logic and they're always talking <laughs> about things like that. But it's twisted logic and it's, it's a kind of rationalization and uh, twisted logic that comes from a lack of any understanding of data or evidence, lines of evidence, or established theories, or whatever. I mean, they just have no clue about anything, but they just don't like the government. So that's it. You know, they don't understand anything about anything. It's just, it's just crazy. But there's tons and tons of people that believe this stuff. And if any politician uh, caters to it, they're just going to fall in line and be extremely excited about that person. He's a governor. He's in government and hates the government. So he's going to destroy the government, destroy his job and his career for you. And then you get to be what? An anarchist or what? What do you get to be at the end of the day? When there's no services, there's no energy. Um, who's going to take care of the sewer and the power grid and everything? You know, I mean, at this scale of civilization, we, we just can't easily go back to um, living on family farms. It has to be organized globally. There have to, have to be governments involved with it, as well as private enterprise. And you have to agree on a plan of action before anything can happen to change things. But like I always say, I think no one cares. They're not interested in this stuff. They don't want to know. Uh, people just want to get on with it and come what may. And therefore, at some point, in the Middle East, you'll have an outflow of climate refugees like you've never seen. And uh, the world will have to decide, you know, um, what to do about it. Do we, do we kill them as they try to get into our country or, or what? <laughs> so people like Yarvin say, just build the Palestinians a little city in the Sinai and stick them in it and they'll be fine. We have peace. Um, well, yeah, you, you just uh, ask a, a racist American, do they want a, two million uh, Palestinian immigrants, legal immigrants? Yeah, bring them into my town. They can live in my basement till they get sorted out. No, it's not going to happen. Yeah, are they going to go to France? Are they going to go to Germany, Hungary, Italy? Spain? No. Are they going to go to Jordan? Failed states like Syria and Lebanon? 
Yemen. Uh, where are they going to go? There's no place to go. So they're going to be ground down and beaten and destroyed because that's the agenda. And it's obvious. You, you can believe your eyes you, and ears. You can, you can believe it, you know. And also they tell you straight up, the leaders in Israel, what the plan is. So you know it from the horse's mouth, so to speak. And that's basically what's going to happen. America always beats up on little guys, insurgents. Uh, it knows how to drop bombs on weak uh, people, people much weaker than themselves. And it looks good doing it. You know, the propaganda machine, the communication machine can make it look really heroic while they're dropping uh, bombs on weddings in Afghanistan or, or uh, leveling a city in Iraq. And they always have good reasons for it. And somehow it's helping American people. I don't know how it does that, but um, Americans believe it as they go to their drudgery job at Amazon and then fret when the robots come in. They hate their job, but they're going to lose their job to robots. Then what are they going to do? The contradictions are just surreal, and there are layers and layers of them. I hope you'll seek out uh, good information. Go somewhere by yourself sometimes without any inputs and just think about the world and yourself in it and see what you come up with on your own. But, uh, yeah, basically, you know, I this morning I just woke up and it was 2016 again. So what's uh, new is old again. Bouleanti, out. <laughs>